Welcome to the teaching ministry of B.D. Hyman. B.D. Hyman's teachings will prepare you to face life's difficult challenges through the power and knowledge of God's Word. Join us now as we discover the truth in God's Word with B.D. Hyman. Hello and welcome to the program. Sadly, most Christians have little or no interest in the end time. It's amazing to me how many people I talk to uh, who call me, and that's fine, I encourage people to call me, and I begin asking them questions to get to where we need to be for me to help them and minister to them in preparation for prayer because we have to be uh, lined up with the Word for prayer to be effective. And I begin talking to them about the end time, and they say, well, my church doesn't really get into that that much. And I say, well, that's terrible, because we need to know about the end time. We need to know what's happening now, what's going to be happening, where we fit in it, what we are supposed to be involved in, and just as importantly, what we're not supposed to be involved in. Uh, tremendous numbers of Christians waste huge percentages of their lives in being involved with prayer ministries that are praying for things that are going against what God has spoken, therefore there's no point, that are involved in trying to, to fix the world and fix situations that are ungodly that can't be fixed. Now, maybe they feel as though they're doing something useful, but they're not. And if they invested that amount of time and spiritual energy in doing what they should be doing, they would accomplish so much. So we need, as, as believers, to be intensely interested in the end time, in the prophetic. Um, Jesus called people hypocrites who didn't understand who didn't know the season. And we are not to be hypocrites. We have to make the right choices. We must make the right choices. If we don't make the right choices now, and we wait too long, then those who wait will have Satan make the choices for them. Now, you don't want Satan making your choices for you. His choice for you is to be in the tribulation and take the mark of the beast, which is eternal condemnation, lake of fire, forever and ever and ever. This is not an option that any sane person wants. So, I have a book that I'm going to offer you at the end of this program that takes the end time, all of the, the smoke and the mirrors and the, the dragon's teeth and dragon's breath and horns and all of the symbolism that is so difficult for people to understand and explains it, lays it all out chronologically so that anyone can understand it. We, I know children, we have 12-year-olds, 10-year-olds who read this book and who understand what's coming and where they fit in it. It's all the who, what, where, when, and why because People today have developed this, this hardness of heart where it's concerned. And I can understand it a little bit, but I'm offering you an alternative. And the thing I understand is that they hear so many different opinions from so many different ministries. People who are telling them conflicting things. And they get completely confused. And when they get completely confused, they kind of give up and say, well, we'll all find out when the time comes. Well, the, the we'll all find out when the time comes philosophy is not going to work. Yeah, you will find out when the time comes. But if you haven't made the right choices, you'll find out that you're in a world of trouble and you're here for the tribulation. You know, and I've heard people say, well, God wouldn't, wouldn't count people out and leave them here for the horror of the tribulation just because of this or just because of that? Yes, because God requires total obedience. He requires it. Think about this. When we're 
glorified and raptured. We become the permanent body of Christ. The permanent body of Christ. That means God is stuck with us forever. You don't think he requires 100% loyalty and service to him? You bet he does. In Hebrews 3, starting in verse 7, Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, Today, if you will hear his voice. And I want you to hear my voice today. Because I am speaking on behalf of him. I am speaking what the scriptures say. I'm not speaking my opinion or what men say in any way. I'm speaking what the scriptures say. So, today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion, in the day of trial in the wilderness, where your fathers tested me and tried me and saw my works for 40 years. Therefore, I was angry with that generation. These are the ones who did not enter in. And they said, they always go astray in their heart, and they have not known my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. This is the people of the old covenant who grumbled, who complained, who were disobedient. They hardened their hearts against the instructions of God. And so because they always went astray in their heart and refused to know God's ways, he would not let them enter into his rest. They could not cross over into the promised land. Now for us, this translates as we will not be glorified and raptured. That's entering in at the end for us. And yes, there is a rapture. And for the church, the rapture is the next one to come, which is before the tribulation, because we are the restraining force. Antichrist cannot rise to power until we are out of here. As bad as it is now, as disastrous as things seem, Antichrist cannot do what he really wants to do until we're out of here. Beware, brethren. Now, this is in Hebrews. This is the New Testament. He's reminding us of this, this passage of Scripture. And then he says, Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. So he's saying that's what happened to the people in the past generations. I mean, imagine if when God started speaking to Noah, Noah had no interest in building an ark. I'm not into arks. I just, you know, it's not my thing. I, I'll, just, uh, I'll just wait and see what happens. Well, Noah and his family would not have been saved, would they? No. So you can't afford, no Christian can afford to have that attitude of complacency. Beware, beware. Every time it says beware, it's talking specifically about something to watch out for because it could destroy you. And he says, beware, brethren. That means beware, members of the body of Christ, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Anytime we behave in a way that, that lacks faith, anytime we draw back from faith, we're drawing back from God because the Word says the only way to please God is by faith. The only way. And that's Hebrews 11.6. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today. In other words, what I'm doing right now, exhorting you to learn and understand what is going on to understand how you fit in all of these awesome plans and purposes that God has for you and for the church. Exhort one another daily, while, while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Now, he just finished in verse 12 saying that it was an evil heart of unbelief. Unbelief is sin. So if we don't believe, we're in sin. For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. If we don't get rattled, if we don't give in to the, the, the fear and the fury of the world. And then he 
It goes on to say again, while it is said today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. And he goes on to say what a dreadful result all of those who did rebel against him in the wilderness had. They could not enter in. They did not enter into the promised land until the Joshua generation. He said that entire generation would have to die in the wilderness. Well, our wilderness is the tribulation. And we are watching the world prepare for the one world order of Antichrist, the one world religion and the one world political system and the one world economic system and all other systems. There'll be a one world order. You're even hearing our politicians uh, occasionally have for several years occasionally refer to the one world order. Um, and some of them know what they're saying and some of them don't. Um, but some do. And the one world order of Antichrist is coming. It is definitely coming. But it will not come until we have been removed from the earth. In this book that I'm going to offer you called The Rapture, The Tribulation, and Beyond, it is all about preparing you to qualify for the rapture. Yes, there are qualifications for the rapture. And we have to qualify. We have to be blood-bought. We have to be spirit-filled, which is the new birth, which makes us sons of God, part of the body of Christ. We have to know who we are in Christ. That means we have to know that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus and that we are the body and not the bride because he's coming back for his body. His bride is New Jerusalem and she's already in the heavenlies and she's waiting and she's prepared. So we have to know who we are in Christ and we have to be expecting the specifically the pre-tribulation rapture of the church. Specifically. Not just any old rapture any time. If you look at what God did with Noah when he told Noah that he was to build an ark, he didn't just say, build, build a boat and I'll see you later. No. He gave Noah details. He told him exactly what the dimensions of the ark would be, what kind of wood to use, what kind of pitch to use. With great detail, he explained to Noah how to build that ark, where to put everything, what sizes things were to be, and took him through every detail of it. Well, he's doing the same thing for you. He's taking you through every detail of this. No, it's not all in chronological order. Um, Jesus gave us 10 New Testament commandments, and people say to me, well, where are they? Well, they're not all in one place like they are in the Old Testament. They are scattered throughout his ministry, but they're nonetheless 10 New Testament commandments. We have to have a vital interest in learning these things and walking them out because otherwise we harden our hearts. Beware of having an evil heart of unbelief. Do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. And so many today have been taught to harden their hearts about the last moments of the age, to harden their hearts about understanding the end time and understanding what's happening. Uh, one of the things I talk about and, and get into the details of in this book, The Rapture, The Tribulation, and Beyond, is God's covenant with Israel. It's not what most people think it is. It is a perpetual covenant. It is forever. It is very specific. But it is not within the church. It is not what people think it is. Unless you understand the millennial nations and the eternal nations, which most people have no interest in, you won't understand God's perpetual covenant with Israel because that's where it will culminate. And there are so many things that are taught so badly that are just destroying God's people, like the whole question of where Israel fits and where the Jews fit in God's plan of eternity. Um, it's there. It's clear in Scripture, but it's not being taught. 
And I do teach it in this book. I do teach, um, for instance, about rebuilding the temple and the fact that it doesn't matter what temple is on the Temple Mount when the tribulation ends because when Jesus comes and puts his foot on the Mount of Olives, there's an earthquake that splits the earth three ways that is the greatest earth earthquake the world has ever seen and everything is brought down to rubble. So whatever is there during the tribulation, if it's the Dome of the Rock, if it's a different structure, whatever, will be turned to dust and then Jesus will rebuild his millennial temple, brand new, that he will sit in and rule from. And he will build his throne and his temple. And there are so many things like this that we need to understand because otherwise political events and the um, concerns of, of the world and, and the ministries out there that are just coming up with these crazy ideas will get you to that place where you'll just zone out and say, I, I give up. It's too, conf too confusing. Well, my book makes it chronological, makes it clear, answers all the questions as to who, what, when, where, and why, based on our choices, based on our, the knowledge that God has given us. And if you want to save your children and yourself from the soon coming horror of the tribulation, you will have a vital interest in learning what it's all about. You will not want to put it off for one more day. You will want to grab hold of this resource that I'm making available to you and learn what it's all about. Make sense of it. God wrote it in a way that seems impossibly confusing at first because in just the same way that Jesus spoke in parables, he wanted us to dig. He wanted us to come to him and say, Lord, what does this mean? And let the Holy Spirit open it up to us because we know all things by the Holy Spirit. And we are required to know. We're required to know. It's, it's an, an absolute. At the end of, of the book of Revelation, in verse, uh, in chapter 22, I'm sorry, uh, 18 and 19, he says, For I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part from the book of life and from the holy city and from the things that are written in this book. And then he says, he who testifies to these things says, of course, who is Jesus? Surely I am coming quickly. Now, obviously that didn't mean in that day, 2,000 years ago, immediately. It means that when he does come, it's going to be suddenly. And you're not going to have time to get it right. You have to get it right now. You have to get it right when you have the ability to study it and put it all together and line yourself up with it and get to a place where you will have the confidence to know that you can bring yourself and your family into the glorification and the rapture. There's a part you have to play in this. And you better learn what it is. Because when he comes, he comes quickly. He comes suddenly. And there won't be time to do anything. It will be time's up. And those who are lined up, those who are obedient sons of God, will be glorified. He says, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, in the twinkling of an eye, just a, a nanosecond, we who are in line will be glorified. And then at that point, the body of Christ is sealed. It is complete. It is sealed. There's no one going to be added to it. No one can be taken away from it. And no one is going to be added to it. And then 
after that, there's a time period, and then there is the rapture of the church. And at that point, it's all over. Being part of the body of Christ is no longer available. So I want you to get this book. I want you to, to understand how vital it is to know what is in here. And this is, this is not something we can put off. This is not something we can just think of in sort of fairy tale terms and think of you know the beautiful white horses that the Lord has provided for us. Yes, he has. But if you want to sit on one, you better be lined up now. And the horse that he rides on is beautiful, and all of it is wonderful, but don't put it into a, a fairy tale category. This is real. This is now. And you haven't got a whole lot of time left to, to get lined up. Um, we, we need to make sure that we know. I mean, I recommend that every member of the family have one of these books and read it and mark in it and check it out and learn it so that they're ready. This is the greatest witnessing tool there is. I know people who've put this on their coffee table and had family members who um, had really no interest in the Lord at all. But the anointing that is on this book just compelled them when no one was looking, because they didn't want anybody to know that they were looking at it, to pick it up and to start reading it and to really get involved with it and come to the place of becoming part of Christ. So this is, I mean, it's a 430-page book. It's a large book because it has a lot of information in it, but it's all done chronologically and in, in, in categories. And it's probably the best tract that there ever has been. Large tract, yes, but it is a tremendous witnessing tool as well as equipping you to know who you are and where you're going and to not be deceived by false doctrine and by the lies of the church, but to know who you are and to know where you're going and have total confidence in your part in everything. And we thank you for, for taking this seriously. I thank you for taking this seriously because you really need to know. You can't afford to be complacent. You need to know. Every prophecy that needs to be fulfilled prior to the coming of Christ has been fulfilled. All we are waiting for is God's sovereign timing. In 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 53, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. Like I said, when that trump sounds, it happens instantly, instantly and you don't have time to prepare. Now is when you have time to prepare. At the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible, the dead in Christ will be resurrected and raised, and we shall be changed. We who are alive and remain, who are now standing on the earth with all the dead in Christ will be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. That's what we're going to be, incorruptible and immortal. And it's going to happen in the twinkling of an eye, which is why you need to get this book, my book, The Rapture, The Tribulation, and Beyond, because it will lay it all out for you. You, you can't just be complacent about this and expect to be okay. This is your future we're talking about. This is the future of your family that we're talking about. This is where you're going to be for eternity. You can't afford to take this lightly. In 2 Timothy 2, 4 and 5, it says, No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. 
And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. In other words, someone can run in a race. Someone can be a Christian all their lives. But if they don't do it God's way, they're not going to get the crown of glory. In a natural race, if they don't compete according to the rules, they may win that race. But they'll be disqualified because they broke the rules. And somebody else will get that crown. Well, it's the same in this race in the kingdom. We are all going to get the crown of glory if we compete according to the rules. And God sets the rules. Don't think you can get there any other way. Don't think you can just ignore what God has laid out for us as what qualifies us to be partakers of the glorification and the rapture, to become incorruptible and immortal, to be the, the people that God has created us to be. This life here is boot camp. It's a holding time to prove ourselves to God. So we have to do it. And if we don't, then we're going to be left out. In 2 Timothy 4, 7 and 8, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. There is so much to know. That's why the book is is 430 pages because there's a lot to know but don't be discouraged by that embrace it because it's all laid out in a way that you can line it up in your thinking and get it not just get a lot more information that you can't process God has prepared a glorious future for you absolutely awesome but he's prepared it for the sons of obedience and only obedience. So I want you to choose to qualify. Yes, it's your choice to qualify. This is a gospel for whosoever will. So become a whosoever will. I hope you are one of them because this is a covenant that foresaw everything. God foresaw everything. He knows every detail of what's happening now and what will happen. And he's told us how to enter in, how to be part of that glorious body of Christ that is raptured and that dwells with him forever, is part of his government, is part of his throne. And this is not something that you want to miss. We trust that you have been encouraged in God's word during this broadcast. If you have and would like others to enjoy the teaching, write to us or to order materials or to make a gift by phone, you can by calling the phone number on the screen.